We're back out here at the Big Lake once again, and today it's all about getting bites on those super pressured bodies of water. And spoiler alert, it's not nearly as hard as you might think it is. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. Got him. Ah, don't you get caught up in that. Come on, you. It has been a top water frog kind of day. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And let's face it, right now, this time of year, everyone is fishing a pressured fishery. All the anglers are out, whether they're on the bank, whether they're on the boat, and everybody's got a line in the water. It can make things extremely challenging. Unless you're fishing Grandpa's farm pond, you're practically elbow to elbow with other anglers on the lake, especially on the weekend. So what do we do? Do we stay home? No. You can get out there and you can actually get some really good bites. I fish one of the most pressured lakes in the entire country, especially given its small size. 640 acres, thereabouts, and it's the only fishery in the area for over 1 million people. It stays packed even during the week. But on the weekend, it is crazy. Still, I've got content I've got to make. I've got work I have to do. It doesn't stop me from coming out here. You guys expect me to be able to give you the tips and tricks that you need to catch fish on your lakes. So I still have to come out here. So there's a method that I use. Now we've talked about it before. I use simple method. I do my homework before I even come out here, right? We've talked about that. I look at the previous few days weather report. I know the trend that's happening. I know which way the wind has been blowing, which way that wind generated current is going to be going. So that tells me how it's going to relate to my lake because I've used Google Earth to map it out. Not that hard. It gives me an idea. That helps. I find not a lot of other anglers do that. They decide, hey, I'm going fishing today. They put their boat in the water and away they go. It always helps to have strategy, to have a plan, to have an idea of where to look first and what you want to fish. For me, when I get to the lake, obviously I'm going to be covering water with a jerkbait. That's one of the things I'm going to start with once I've identified those areas that I want to look for. And most of the time, it's going to be far away from other anglers. And it's not just because my little boat can get in super skinny water. No, I'm still fishing in 10, 12, 14 feet of water, but I'm finding areas because I'm doing my homework that other guys aren't targeting. Now, what are some of the things that I'm looking for? Well, obviously I'm looking for current, but there's something else along the bank that I'm looking for we've talked about before. And all that vegetation, all that hydrilla gets chopped up, all the pile and all the trash, well, it gets deposited in piles along the bank in pockets. We've talked about it before. And those mats are great places to target if you're fishing the bank. It doesn't matter if you're fishing from the bank. It doesn't matter if you're fishing from the boat. Those areas act as shelters for those bass to hide under and to use as ambush points. It's a great place to target. It's one of the first places I go. And I notice that not a lot of guys are targeting those. And I've caught so many fish. I mean, here, the past few days, I've been using a topwater popping frog putting it right in those areas, and I've pulled out some really nice fish. Now, thing is, though, is my camera, my chesty, somehow reset, so pay no attention to the date and time in the corner. I don't know how that happened. So it's going to be on some of the videos that you're going to see. It's going to be on some of the fish catches that you're going to see in this video, but I fixed it, so hopefully not everyone will be there. But the point is, those are the types of places I'm looking for. I'm looking for where the current is going to bring those nutrients in, and I'm also looking for places along the bank. Now, whenever I see places along the bank that have those pockets of vegetation, that hydrilla, that milfoil, all of that garbage and slop chopped up and brushed to the side, 
So what's the very first thing that I'm doing when I get out there and I see that stuff along the bank? Well, we've talked about it before. I'm paralleling my boat along the bank and I'm making cast with a search bait, something like a square bill, something like a topwater spook, something like a spinner bait. Those all work well. And it allows me to keep my bait in that strike zone for a long time. If I see particularly choice spots, well, then I'm going to be stopping and targeting those. I'm going to more perpendicular my boat to the bank. I'm going to be targeting those spots and working them more thoroughly. You know what? Let's go out on the water and I'll show you just exactly what I mean. Now, when we talk about covering water and I've got a head and one knocker spook and we're talking about paralleling the bank, you see I got my boat pretty close to the bank facing that way. And what that allows me to do is that allows me to make long casts down that way. And I can cover all of this structure all the way back to me. I can work the water pretty quickly. I can keep my bait in the strike zone a lot longer. It doesn't have to be just open areas. It doesn't have to be just casting out into open water. You know, like we talked about, a spinner bait would work good here. A buzz bait would work good through here. But that allows me to work these waters quickly and easily. And if I get a bite, if I see some action, I can pick it apart cleanly with something else. But if I uh, don't get anything, well, I've quickly covered the area and I can move right on. So that's basically the concept, what we're talking about when you want to cover water, especially with top water. You know, you've got a top water spook like this. It is a great search bait. It's a great search bait. Now I prefer a spook in shallower water, which is what we're in here. We're only about six feet of water here. And I prefer a spook in a shallower place. But I can cover this whole area real quick, find out if anybody's home, and then I can move on to something else. And that's basically the concept of using top water, using a spook to cover water with. Down and dirty, nice and easy. Like I said, I can cover along the bank here, I can cover parallel cover along the bank, and I can also cast out here into open water, and I can make casts all around. And we can see if anybody's home, and if anybody wants to say hello. Now I've got this Rico popper on, and you can see I've kind of more perpendicular to the bank now than I was when I was parallel to it. And what that allows me to do is I can make specific casts on targets like that, like that timber right there, that lay down. And it allows me to work it. I can work this popper in that area for just a little bit. And then I reel it back into the boat. I'm working that specific targeted area. I'm not trying to work a whole bunch of areas. I'm just working that one spot where I cast in that small area around that timber. And then I'm reeling it in and I'm moving it on. And you can use both of these methods for locating bass. You don't always have to be in complete search mode. If you see something juicy like that wood pile right there or under a dock or flooded brush or whatever, then make some casts on it. That's a great way to put yourself on fish. You don't have to always cover water and be in cover water mode. You can learn how to mix the two together, you know, and it can be with anything, right? I could be throwing a wacky rig at that. I could be throwing a Texas rig or a small jig at that or even a swim bait. It's all depending on how you want to work that area. You know, you can pick it apart as thoroughly or as quickly as you want to. It all depends on, well, how much time you have and how productive you think the area is going to be. So right there, I wanted to get right in that. That's a brand new tree that's down. So I, do, I, I kind of really want to investigate that. That tree's only been down in the water. It hasn't been down in the water very long at all. And like I said, I don't want to work it all the way back to the boat. 
kind of want to work it just a little bit see who is home if nobody's home we're moving on we're going to move on to the next one kind of find another targeted area there's another little lay down right there another little log under the water and we're going to kind of work that and something like a popper excels at that you know you can like i said it does not necessarily have to be a popper it can be a wacky rig it can be a mako rig it can be a fluke just something that you're going to work slowly and if you learn how to put those two techniques together you definitely going to increase your fish fish catches for sure okay very simple concept we've talked about it before that's what we mean when we say paralleling the bank and working along it and keeping your bait in that strike zone in that high percentage area more and you see that i mix it up with finding those little pockets now what if you're from the bank well the trick from the bank is keep those feet moving you can cover water too you have just as much access to the areas i just talked about you know they're right along the bank you can see that matted vegetation you can see those places where the current has pushed all that into those pockets and i'm telling you those mats those garbage mats those trash mats whether they're along the bank or under docks or whatever bass are hiding out up underneath those so make casts and until you find something keep making cast keep those feet moving make a cast move on make a cast move on when you're working from the bank that's how you cover water you have to have that moving mentality if you find a spot that seems a little bit fishy well just like if you're in the boat and you want to pick a spot apart using a popper or something that you work in place a wacky rig or something like that you can do that from the bank as well with pretty much the same baits and presentations a wacky rig, a popper, something like that is great if you see a particular spot that looks especially bassy that you really want to work a bait in. So it's not as complicated as we make it out to be. We tend to overthink things. Stick with your confidence baits. Stick with just a couple of colors. You're not going to need every single color under the sun. I can tell you from my experience, stay away from other anglers if you can you know even if it's your buddies right even if you have your buddies with you and don't crowd the bank if you're a bank angler you know don't crowd the bank stay back 10 15 feet or more especially when you're making those initial casts because those bass have very sensitive lateral lines and they can feel the vibrations in the water of your feet making steps on the ground so tread lightly make your first few casts from a ways back and if you follow these things and if you do a few of these things you're going to find that it doesn't have to be so bad whenever you're fishing a pressured fishery you can actually have quite a bit of success until it just becomes second nature and a pressured fishery is just like any other fishery and you're still able to go out and catch fish so there you have it my method for fishing pressured waters Keep that in mind, do your homework, and find your way around when you get there, and keep moving. Chances are you'll be able to put yourself on bass a lot more quickly and a lot more easily than you think you can. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.